back. In case you're just joining us, this is Daybreak and you're right in time for a discussion with our female legislators on the state of the nation. So joining us, allow me to do the right thing and introduce our guests this morning. We have Emilio Diembo, Suba North Member of Parliament, who is joining us this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Say so closer to her, we have Honorable Martha Wangiri, who is the Member of Parliament for Gilgil. Asante Sana. Asante Sana. And so that on this other side, I have with me Sylvia Kasanga, nominated Senator. It's good to have you with us again. Good morning. Thank and no you. stranger to the show, Beatrice Salachi, Honorable Beatrice Salachi. Such a speaker of the Nairobi Assembly County. Ladies, it's good to have you with us here this morning. Thank you. So on the Standard newspaper, the first thing that will probably greet you is um, a 90-year wait for governors in T, Saiso Land and the Tasso. So you get a few um, of the comments on different governors and what they think on terms of matters land. This story is on page 6 and page 7 of the Standard newspaper. But if there's one that will probably also grab your attention, if you're keeping up with Kiambu politics, is that of page 8. DPP wants to to on half salary during the graft cases. They say that the state defends decisions by magistrate court to bar uh, Kiambu boss from office claiming he is on suspension and he should earn therefore half his pay. That story is on page eight. Haji wants Waiti to, to be paid half his salary. Page five, a story that is quite um, heartbreaking. Misery of poor women exposed at city hospital. Most pregnant women wrestle with the fear that their babies will be exchanged as they go to seek maternity services at Mama Lucy Hospital. That story is on page five. So just a general overview of what to expect on the Standard newspaper this morning. Trevor, on mm -hmm. the daily? On the front page of the Daily Nation, another scandal. DCI probes 4.4 billion pipeline tender scam. Detectives believe insiders of the Kenya pipeline worked with the dodgy Lebanese contractor to force extension of contract and make a killing before state house cuddled the theft plot. That story continues on page five. There's a complete breakdown there. Also on the front page, teachers cry foul over salary cuts and also why Ojuang is off the hook. And at the top of the newspaper by then, that is where we're going to begin. No traditional send of rights for cremated Kibra member of parliament. Distraught family will instead conduct a prayer service at Ken Okot's maternal home in Ogenga village in Kabondo Kasipul, that's in Homa Bay County, at a date to be announced soon. That story continues on page six. But it's, it's been a conversation that has continued online, everywhere. There's been locking of horns, and one honorable Milio Diambo is with us this morning. Yeah. Mili, and I'll start with you here. There's been a lot of exchange between yourself and yes. the governor of Nairobi County. Yes. But what really act you in this particular prayer service? Because there was there's a concern for many that Anne didn't really have to be put on a spot where she has to defend her honor and prove that she's been with someone else. It was the role of the member of parliament to declare that. Uh, well, I think that is my problem because uh, I speak as a lawyer, not yeah. as a pedestrian. And as a lawyer, I know that uh, Anne has no legal right. She's not a wife, but her child has legal rights as a child. So there was no reason to create drama around Anne. If the child is Ken Court's child, then the only thing that would happen is the child would stand to inherit. There is nothing to gain at uh, uh, a funeral service. And even if that were the case, there must be protocol to be followed. There's not only Anne and the child, there's Anne, there's the child, there's the wife, there's the family, and there's everybody who is mourning. So there is absolutely no reason to cause drama that does not confer uh, legal rights. Uh, uh, you know, a funeral service is not an instrument that confers rights. So if you actually look at a lot of the things that Honorable Sonko is saying, substantially, it's the same as what I'm saying, that we must recognize if that is Ken's child, the child must be recognized and must be given the dues, which is inheritance, that will not happen at a funeral or a funeral service. So that was a necessary drama and PR exercise. His, his mode or method of doing things, I do not agree with. Yeah. And the uh, populist, as I told him. So basically just that. And that's, what, that's our point of departure. But on issues of substance, yeah. we are speaking the same language. Because he says that you're not fighting for the rights of women. And many people are arguing that he shouldn't have to be the one to prove all these things. And uh, also, Sonko's yes, allegation is that legislators are pushing this agenda on their own because they're the ones who are involved in ulterior relationships, but they do not want to declare. Well, I will tell you this. Uh, one, even if our because if you say legislators are involved in ulterior whatever and don't want to declare, 
if I am involved in an ulterior relationship and don't want to declare, it's kind of uh, irrelevant because I will not be going to want my child declared at a funeral. But uh, what I want to say is that I am a lawyer. Uh, let me repeat that. I'm not a pedestrian. And I'm a lawyer that founded a child rights organization, the Credo, and has worked with FIDA for many years. So I know the law and I know how to go about the law. And I have settled many cases, even as recent as three months ago, I, I settled a case for a child relating to a governor. I, I didn't go to a funeral service to do that. So what I'm telling Sonko is don't do theatrics that do not translate into rights. He may only say this, I'll take care of Ken's son. Yeah. He doesn't even need to, because under the law, that child is catered for. There mm -hmm. is uh, insurance uh, cover and in, the, in Parliament, and if there is any little property Ken had, it will go for in, you know, in succession, yeah. under the Succession Act, not at a funeral service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mwende Bongari, what do you think of that situation? <laughs> First of all, I would just want to say, because I've not been here for a while, to yeah. just say rest in peace to Ken Okoth and to Governor Laboso. But more importantly, I think it's just what Mili has said. And most of us have expressed ourselves, including myself, even yeah. uh, through Facebook and all, because uh, the rights of the child are protected under Article 53 of the Constitution. And uh, it's not even debatable. <coughs> and for me, what I found funny with what Sonko did, and it, I think you would be really giving him too much attention by answering him here, is that... Uh, he, he's an attention seeker because he didn't have to do that in the funeral service. Uh, and I know Honorable Ken Okoth, the late Honorable Ken Okoth, had his house in order. Mm -hmm. And if there was any problem, if, if the, the route that uh, Anne took to court and the negotiations they took could have been the right way to do it, not to just plaster it on TV just to look good or to look like you're the one who is whistleblowing. There was nothing to whistleblow because the child has the rights protected. And uh, maybe to Anne also <coughs> is that uh, she wasn't seeking to be recognized as a wife. I don't think that was the contention. She was seeking for the rights of the child. And uh, that is what we should stick with. Mm -hmm. But uh, as for the language, I think what we have seen online from Sonko is really demeaning mm -hmm. the stature of a governor. Mm -hmm. It also tells a lot about uh, the people we put in office sometimes because the language he has used right. to Milio Diambo and to everyone. I mean, he has been on record attacking women from Shebesh, from, I mean, he, he's a bully. To say he's a bully and i think it's irresponsible and he should if you want to announce you have two wives you don't need a con ken Okod's funeral to tell us you have two wives right. i mean you have your ways of doing things uh what he did was irresponsible and i hope that eventually <coughs> the rights of this child will be protected uh, totally when it's proven that he's uh ken Okod's son mm -hmm. and i don't think anyone would be willing to disinherit the child that right. now will be against the law Honorable Kasanga, let me come to you. One would say what um, Governor Sonko did was rude. Others would hail him and say it was very bold of him, very courageous, outright, and straightforward. Nevertheless, do you think that that, that drama was necessary? Was it needed at a barrio? No, 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 no. But I thank you so much for having me here again, Trevor and Zinzi. But it's already been said, it was not necessary. Mm -hmm. If somebody knows the rights, knows the law, then you don't have to go through all this drama. It's really unfortunate. But let me also just add and say, this issue of saying it's only the legislators who are doing, we know this is a societal issue. It doesn't just mean, you know, legislators. It's happening to across board, across Kenyans, across Africans, across the world. People are known to have these side affairs in their marriages. But the law has taken care of. Our new constitution, in fact, is so encompassing. It's so involved, you know, it, it encompasses all the rights of the children equally. So there was no need for all this drama. It's really, really unfortunate, I must say. And she's right. This is the caliber of leaders we have as Kenyans. We really need to introspect and change our attitudes towards some of these things. So, you know, it's already been said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Honorable Elachi, where do you stand with this? Mm. Well, first, uh, I just want to say that it was very, very unfortunate to start it in Ken Okot's burial, a burial that I believe Ken would have wished the peaceful man he was, everything to be peaceful for him. And all this drama, Ken did not become sick at yesterday, knocked by a car and is just dead. Ken has walked a journey 
of sickness. And I'm hoping Anne, at one point, took a, a flight and went to France. I'm just hoping that she took a flight and went to France and looked at Ken at that time when he was suffering. Because that is the time he would have, she would be there, speak to Ken and the wife. Ken will have told him, these are the plans I've done for the child. But because she did not care about that time, he was going through a painful process. Then you wait on his burial, is when you wake up and realize, oh, this is a man I slept with, now I have a child. It was wrong. I won't say the way I, they I have said. I don't For think me, it's fair in, to allude that she did not really, she wasn't involved during the time. If she was involved, sure if she that. was, or if she was involved, yeah. this drama would not have been there. You doubt it? <laughs> yeah, because I doubt it's it because... It's a very patriarchal no, approach. I don't can, Ken would not doubt. For me, I think, if she was there, definitely Ken would have said, look, I am sick, and this is the plans of the child. Trust me. Ken is not just a man who was... He's a man who was very organized, by the way. Let us agree. And that is why, in his will, he has it. So if he has it in his will... It means he had very good intentions to ensure everything is just in peace. And if she went to see Ken, and I'm repeating, definitely would have whispered something to her. <laughs> so to go and do it in a drama of a funeral, I have, re and, and especially, this is not a woman who is just coming from uh, the village. No, this is also a legislator. So she knows. She okay. knows it's Martha not a, if it was a woman disagree. coming really from the yes. village, <laughs> yeah. I would agree you can do all those dramas because you are coming from a village, you don't understand the law, you don't understand this. But because you are a legislator, first of all, you need to have understood the law. I want to say, you know, the details of how Ken Okoth related with Anne, in fact, it was brought to us by Sonko himself that they met when he was here, he, she was a nurse. We don't even know how they got to sleep together. But for me, the product that is innocent is a child. Okay. The issue of taking, uh, taking care of Ken O'Koth in his deathbed yeah. was not the responsibility of Anne. No, no, I'm not saying I'm just taking saying, care. Yeah. I'm just saying that that should not, because we also have also other living clear, not sure dead what beats. Happened we also have time. other living dead beats that yeah. you have talked to, mm -hmm. and they have refused to take responsibility, whether they are sick or they are not sick. We cannot judge Anne and say that uh, she should have gone to France or to, the, the, uh, to Europe yeah. so that we take care of or we recognize her or we avoid the drama. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, he, she knew Ken was married. Ken knew he was married. So the, the role of the wife cannot be put on Anne, yeah. but they had a child. So that is the most important bit. Yeah, yeah. They, are, they made okay. decisions, they made uh, choices, and to live with the choices to take care of the son. It okay. is not even about how they related or whether she wanted to be the wife yeah. or whether she talked to him when he was dying or took care of him. Yeah. The issue is the child. We must okay. not depart from the most important thing, Which is that this child. child did not apply to be born in that setting. And we're still waiting for the DNA yeah. test. And Honorable Millie, you're quoting Article 53 of the Constitution. How would you have rather she handled it? Because even at, if that means that they, she needed DNA testing. What, How did she get DNA testing what if she I, didn't what go I, what to I, court? What I, what I can tell you, yeah. maybe so that we understand the sequencing, and for records, uh, Article 53, if you go to the Hansard, especially the one that recognizes children born out of wedlock, was brought by me, not by legislators, by me. So I'm the one who recognized children like Ken Court's children. Why? Because when I was at the cradle, yeah. there were many cases that were coming to us, and they are no longer called children born out of wedlock. There is a case uh, that was determined, I think, in the High Court of Kisumu or Kakamega, that decided that there they, they are no children. Children are not categorized as born out of wedlock or otherwise. All, all I can say is that there are children who are born when their parents are not married to each other. Yeah. But they are considered the, a child to, you know, both the mother and the father because it's not their fault. So I am the one who brought that. Uh, but having said that, the issue here is not whether we recognize. The persons who can recognize is the law or the court. It's not a funeral service. Who am I, Milio Diambo, even if I stood up and I said, now I recognize. It's an irrelevant statement because I'm not the law. 
and I'm not the court. It's only two, the law, which automatically recognize, but if there was a dispute, the way people have said, I didn't see it, I, I think I missed it, but I'm told that uh, uh, Honorable Ken Court's mother said it's not the grandchild. So if she disputed, then there's a court, mm. and she has all her rights. As at the funeral service, we could not stop the funeral service to say, now let us stop the service, let us now do it, DNA at the service, even if you did that. Mm -hmm. It does not affect, the only effect it had is to stop Ken Okot's body from being taken to uh, Kabondo for viewing and being returned for the cremation. Mm -hmm. So all it did was to leave the mother uh, with uh, no closure. Mm -hmm. So now we have to go through all. In other words, we were, and, and ordinarily in court, actually not in court, in law, mm -hmm what we look at is the best interest of the child. Yeah. And as a child rights practitioner, putting the child at this awkward position at a funeral where now there is a drama, you know? And mm -hmm. I'm, I keep telling you one word, I am a lawyer, not a pedestrian. So I don't do things, uh, there are things as I told, if you saw what I wrote, there are things I do uh, piggly and then there are things I do as an intellectual. Now, when it comes to children, I don't do piggly. I do intellectual because we need to protect children. And when you come and put a child at a situation where you are ridiculing the child, that's a no-no. I, 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 I do not agree. Right. But one thing, I can tell you one good thing that has come out of it. I want to congratulate uh, my good and young brother, Honre Bosonko, for doing something that I've been trying to say and uh, bring attention to the public for a long time, and it's not caught fire. For the last two days, if you actually look, I was, people kept calling me, say, if you look at Twitter, number one, what is trending is Sonko versus Mili. But what may be lost to, again, uh, uh, some who may be pedestrian, is that Sonko is the embodiment of what I have been saying. And that has enabled me to bring what is called the assisted reproduction bill. People who, uh, you know, he embodies the culture, you know, the old, school of thought, which actually unfortunately still uh, exists, even with modern young people, of looking down upon women who do not have children. I am very proudly childless, and I am proudly a voice of women who are childless. Where has that bill gotten to so far? Uh, the bill has already come for first reading. The committee actually was sitting, uh, the committee of health mm -hmm. was sitting for the last, uh, I think on Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday, and uh, they are giving the report. So we are waiting for the bill to come for the second reading. So I want to congratulate my brother that he is an embodiment of that discrimination which we must dismantle as right. a country. Ladies, we need to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the other issue that came out during the Ken uh, Okot's burial, that of nominations. We have a sen nominated <laughs> senator here yeah. with us. What do you guys think a about that one. statement? As well? a former one. But I'll go back to my statement. While, uh, yes. All of us. Yes. You disagree with me. <laughs> I saw photos. That's yeah. why I'm telling Matt. I yes. saw very good photos of, right. of both of them. Uh -huh. So I, at least you have a communication way of doing it okay. not the way it was done so we will get I to hear still reject that we'll get to hear from the female legislators on <laughs> this specific issue of nominated senators yeah. or just nomination in general where we are with our politics when it comes to that especially after uh, Mike Governor Sonko said that he gave one of his seats or uh, nominated upon seats a request upon a request by one of the legislators so is that how we do is our it based politics on merit or do you, is it based <laughs> no, on who you know <laughs> but first let's see what you're saying online the hashtag is daybreak at travel bidget you can drop. tweet in and also text 224 to, to let's bring them up and read a few of them. Engineer Lazar, a very ardent viewer of the show, says the law is two-edged sword. The same law that protects Anne and her son is the same law that protects rights to privacy. The Nairobi governor must learn the right procedure and right place to expose something. All right. Still sticking to Twitter, hashtag daybreak is um, what you should use. Steve, you say his timing wasn't good, but there was no harm. Governor Sonko putting clear the details 
of the alleged Ken sound. All right, let's see what you're saying on 224222. That's the SMS line and see what your sentiments are. You don't leave a name, but you say before you sire a child, you befriend someone and the law stipulates that if you stay with someone for over six months, then he or she can be declared your wife or husband. That is Sonko not true. was no, right. That, that is not true. So from the legislator, that is <laughs> no, 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 that is not you're legal at all. That. I've actually and seen and people should not be anonymous that line. if yeah. he's a Le legally. Yeah. Somebody clear. I want to clear because there is uh, there is uh, something called presumption of marriage, yeah. and I always because I've educated women all my life uh, about this. I've gone to villages. I have uh, held uh, you know a civic education around it. Yeah. So I do not want people through Twitter to misinform women. I was recently talking to a very high-ranking woman who actually had the mis uh, perception that she's married. She stayed with a man for over uh, 20 years, and they have children who are adults. And uh, people see them as husband and wife, and mm -hmm. she's very sure she's actually a wife. Yeah. But guess what? The she's first not. wife was married in church which is a civil marriage, and if you have a civil marriage, any continue. other marriage contracted after that it's is just null and void. Null and void, it's not a marriage. Yeah. Okay. So let women know, do not be cheated with this uh, six months thing. But even for presumption of marriage, it can apply where the first wife is not married and a civil union, meaning the one for where you do a wedding, mm. or go to the attorney general. It applies where you have been staying together consistently, Everybody perceives you mm. as a husband and wife, yeah. and it must be declared by a court of law. So let nobody cheat so you. So perception is not enough. No, not it's enough. not enough. You okay. have to go now, like for instance, Anne, if she wanted to be declared as Kenno Court's wife, she has to go to court, mm -hmm. produce photographs between herself and, uh, and Kenno Court in, in public functions, Ken's family has to come and say, yes, we know her, we recognize her as a wife. Friends have to come and say, yes, we know them, we recognize them as a wife. Yeah. So it is not enough. Even if you send affidavit, it is only part of proof. But also it the does court said you. photos don't also insinuate it's, marriage. No, it doesn't. It's but it is it. a, it's part of, you know, the, the issue Evidential. of presumption of marriage. It's mm. like you have to bring a whole load mm. of evidence in court. To mm, show, to convince, mm. to convince the right. public that yes, you know, we were not just girlfriend and boyfriend. Mm. We saw ourselves as husband and wife, and the whole world saw us as husband and, and wife. Have, so it's not just about not, and not having children. It's not, it's not <laughs> confirmation. Alone. It's not confirmation. <laughs> like in this case that I was advising a friend of mine, she has a daughter and a son who are in their twenties, and generally, uh, even people perceive her to be married to that guy. But in her case, it's difficult because the first wife is married in church. Yeah. Once there's a marriage in church, you, can't you are not one. married. You cannot, you don't have the legal capacity to contract another. So okay. if Ken was married in church, he had no legal capacity mm -hmm. to marry any other. That's why I'm saying very categorically yeah. that if he was married, then Anita is not a wife. But the son or any other child, is recognized is not because it's not their fault and that's why I pushed for recognition of children born in s such circumstances. Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. So let's take that commercial break. We'll be right back. Double two four double two is our SMS line at Citizen TV Kenya. Hashtag is daybreak. We'll be right back. <laughs>